Okay, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of Poisson and negative binomial regression using uh, IBM SPSS. Um, Poisson and negative binomial regression are utilized in those cases where you have a counting outcome uh, that reflects uh, essentially a uh, frequency account of some event occurrence uh, within some uh, uh, period of time. Um, so in this data set right here, this uh, it is actually constructed from uh, participants' responses to questions in the general social survey. And one of the questions that was asked was, um, was uh, how many days over the past 30 days did you experience poor mental health? So we have um, essentially a count outcome um, reflecting the days or, uh, or the event being uh, poor mental health, uh, days in which you had poor mental health over the past 30 days. So we have, um, so this is our outcome variable and what we're going to look at are several predictors of participants self-reported number of days um, of experiencing poor mental health. So we have a variable that's uh, white which is coded zero for uh, non-white, one for white, age of the uh, participants, uh, education level, um, there was a variable in the data set uh, that asked about um, their health and I took it to mean that they were talking about physical health. And then we also have a variable, I recoded uh, the sex variable into um, a variable that's called female where um, it's coded zero for male and one for female. So to run uh, either of these two analyses, we're going to go through analyze, go to generalized linear models and click on this uh, right here. So first off, we go to type of model, and you'll see down here it's got a uh, number or counts. And so we're going to start off with a Poisson regression. So I'm going to click on Poisson log linear here, and we go to response, and I will move uh, our days variable over to the dependent variable box. We'll next go to predictors, and we're going to move uh, white, uh, age, uh, education, uh, condition of physical health and the female variable over. Now at this point I, I do want to highlight one thing uh, that um, our, um, our outcome variable days of number uh, the days uh, over the past 30 days of poor mental health um, notice that this was this um, we have a, a pretty well-defined period of time that we're talking about in which case uh, individuals are, are, are indicating the frequency of, of poor mental health days um, now sometimes it's the case where we have a count outcome uh, where we don't have quite the same definition of um, a span of time that we're looking uh, at and so uh, to give you an example let's say the question had been how many days have you had poor mental health uh, since your 18th birthday? In that particular case, we, we would have you know individuals uh, of varying ages in our data set. Uh, you know, some of them might be 19, some of them might be 30 or 40 or, or whatever. And so, uh, so we don't have a well-defined period of time, but we are capturing a, a still a span of time. It's just that. Um, um, the, the differences in age would reflect different levels of exposure to the possibility of having poor mental, uh, poor mental health. So a person who, has, um, who is 19 years old uh, you know, has a year's worth of possible days of poor mental health um, uh, that, they could, that they could have as opposed to someone who is 30 years old uh, where, where the exposure level would have been much greater. So if it's the case that you happen to have um, an outcome that, that reflects that kind of uh, where, where, where we don't have a, a well-defined period of time and individuals can uh, have different levels of exposure, then we would want to include a variable that might reflect that different levels of exposure and then we would put that variable into the offset variable box. So for instance, um, you know, in this particular case, uh, I, I, you know, let's say uh, I had asked the question in that kind of way, then maybe age wouldn't be a covariate in the model, but I might have age or something like a computed number of days uh, um, between um, a person's 
current age um, and um, and eight you know 18 um, and then that could have been an offset variable but we're going to leave age in here because uh, we don't have we have a, a good well-defined period of time right here and so that's just something to keep in mind when you are running uh, these types of analyses next we'll go to model and we'll move uh, our variables over um, to um, this box right here so um, and then next we'll go to estimation uh, and I'm just going to leave the defaults on here and go to statistics. We'll click on include exponential parameter estimates, which would capture um, um, basically uh, would provide an incidence rate ratio. Next, I'll click on OK and run the model. And so you can see we have um, our um, description of the model, uh, probability distributions, Poisson. We have a log link function and uh, we'll scroll down. We have goodness of fit values, and uh, we'll kind of get back to this shortly. Next, we'll see that we have an omnibus test, and this is testing the um, whether um, our model that incorporates all of our predictors represents a significant improvement in fit over a null model with no predictors. So the null model is also referred to as an intercept-only model. And so if this uh, likelihood ratio chi-square test, if it indicates statistical significance, then that is going to tell us that we have a significant improvement in fit uh, by virtue of adding in the predictors over a null model with no predictors. And so that seems to be the case in this, in this uh, demonstration. We'll scroll down, scroll down a little bit further and we have a table of parameter estimates. And uh, we have the unstandardized regression coefficient uh, right here. And the thing to keep in mind uh, is that what, what it is capturing is the predicted um, um, change in the expected log counts uh, of the days of, of poor mental health over the past 30 days for every uh, one unit increase on a predictor variable. So uh, when, we, you know, when you look at standard least squares regression, we talk in terms of the uh, predicted amount of change in raw score values on the on the dependent variable for every one unit increase on the predictor. Here we're reflecting the predicted change in expected log counts. Nevertheless, um, you know because it's uh, because we're talking in terms of log counts, it can be a little bit confusing. So the easier way to think about it is is that if you have a positive value, then uh, it's essentially uh, a positive relationship. Uh, positive predictive relationship between uh, your predictor variable and uh, the expected count uh, outcome. So, um, and then a negative value would reflect um, uh, a negative relationship between the predictor and uh, the expected count. So you can see right here, looking at our predictors, white, um, it was coded zero for non-white, one for white, and we have a positive coefficient indicating that essentially, um, if you were white, there was a, a, a greater predicted um, count for the number of days of poor mental health as opposed to a person that indicated they were non-white. And you can see that predictor was statistically significant in the model. We have a variable education, which was positive, and you can see that um, it also is reflecting um, a, you know, a positive relationship. Um, and uh, so individuals who had higher levels of education also indicated uh, uh, a, no, a greater number of days of poor mental health uh, in the past 30 days. Condition of physical health uh, was negative, so that's actually indicating that um, uh, that uh, individuals who were uh, indicating a greater uh, physical health indicated uh, fewer days of poor mental health over the past 30 days, and that was significant. And then age, you see that older people uh, indicated uh, fewer days of poor mental health than uh, younger people. And so that was uh, statistically significant in the model. So um, I'm a little surprised by a couple of these things just by virtue of the, uh, you know, the nature of the variables. Uh, I'm a little surprised about the age one for sure. And because um, certainly as I've gotten older, um, I, well, actually, this is a talk, talking about poor mental, poor mental health, so it's, never mind. Um, physical health may be a little different. Um, so, uh, you know, basically older people reported um, fewer days of poor mental health than um, people that were, uh, that were younger. Um, 
and so forth. So at any rate, uh, that is essentially a Poisson regression. And the, um, the one thing to kind of note is that um, you know Poisson regression makes an assumption that uh, the variance of your um, distribution uh, uh, is uh, equal to the mean of the distribution, or the, the which would be the mean of the counts. So the variance of the counts is equal to the mean of the counts. And when you have uh, the variance being greater than the mean, that actually refers to a, a situation that's called over dispersion. And the reason why this matters is because when your data are over dispersed and you're running a um, Poisson regression, uh, it can yield inaccurate inferences concerning your uh, regression parameters. And uh, you want to do a good job of estimating the population parameters and having good good tests of those parameters. So uh, we, you know, we make the assumption when we're running um, Poisson regression that our data does not exhibit over dispersion. So Poisson, uh, again, we're, uh, the assumption related to the procedure is that uh, the mean and variance for your count outcome are equal. And so if the variance is greater than the mean, then you have over dispersion. And then that suggests then that we need to consider an alternate strategy for modeling the data. Uh, there, are, there are circumstances where you can have under dispersion, in which case uh, the uh, variance is less than the mean, but that's really uh, fairly rare in, um, um, with these kinds of variables. So, um, so how do we assess for over dispersion? Because basically if we have over dispersed data, then we would consider utilizing a technique like negative binomial regression. So um, I was actually reading a little bit last night, and, and you, know, you can kind of look at uh, the, the, the mean and variance of um, your count outcome, and that would give you some indication uh, right there. So I'm just going to go to uh, Days of Poor Mental Health and uh, click on, you know, I've got mean and variance here. I'm going under descriptives just to kind of look at it. And so you can see that uh, you know, the mean is uh, 3.9672, variance is 56. And then also you can look at the, um, the ratio of the deviance to the degrees of freedom uh, in your analysis. And uh, really, at, the further you get away from one, uh, the more over dispersed the data is. And you can see right here that we have um, a value uh, of the, uh, or a ratio of the value for the deviance for the model to the uh, degrees of freedom is uh, 7.638. So that's indicating that we have over dispersion in our data. So uh, to run, so that's gonna highlight or indicate to me that we're gonna need to run a negative binomial regression. So I'm gonna go to analyze, go to generalized linear models as before. And instead of clicking on Poisson log linear, there are a couple of options with negative binomial. One is just to click on negative binomial with log link. And what's going to happen when you do this is uh, you, we, we're essentially adjusting the Poisson regression for the amount of over dispersion. And so in SPSS, we have our, you know, when you're running your analysis with negative binomial, there's a, a thing called the dispersion parameter. And so, uh, and that dispersion parameter is used to adjust, basically adjust your results for the amount of over dispersion. If you go with this uh, option right here, there is a default dispersion parameter um, that is uh, that is utilized. Uh, if you go under custom, you can also uh, and then uh, click on negative binomial with the log link function, then and click on estimate. Then you can then it provides a little bit closer. Oftentimes, it will provide a closer estimate of the amount of over dispersion. So. Uh, we'll start with this one, and then we'll, we'll do the estimate approach. So I'm going to click on negative binomial with log link, click on OK. And so now you can see that we have the probability function, and the dispersion parameters is set at 1. And there's our log link function right here. Uh, when we scroll down, you can see the goodness of fit. And, uh, you, know, there's, um, you know, there's our deviance and, and uh, degrees of freedom and so forth. But uh, you can see we still have a ratio here that's that's greater than one. So still uh, perhaps some over dispersion in our data. Um, 
and then uh, you know even after we sort of try to correct for the over dispersion, uh, the omnibus test still is indicating we have a significant improvement in fit over the null model with no predictors. So uh, we interpret you know this the same way that we did before. When we scroll down a little bit further, um, you can see the parameter estimates, and you can see that um, you know our our variable white uh, still positive but is non significant. Uh, education is uh, still positive. That is significant. Uh, condition of physical health. Um, so higher uh, uh, reported uh, physical health is associated with uh, uh, lower um, expected counts for the days of, of poor mental health, so, and that's si significant. Age is uh, uh, significantly negatively predictive of the expected counts right here. And down here you see that we've got the negative binomial and then you've got uh, essentially um, you know, our dispersion parameter that's being uh, indicated. So um, at any rate, uh, let's try a, uh, uh, another uh, uh, analysis, but we'll estimate the dispersion parameter and try to come up with a little bit more precise estimate. Also, I, I do want to point out that this column right here, this column contains uh, values of what what's called the incidence rate ratio and basically it's uh, you know these values right here are reflecting changes in incidence rate for uh, you know for every one unit increase on the predictor variable so it's it's analogous to, it's very similar and or analogous to the log odds or excuse me the odds ratio in the context of logistic regression except that you're talking about uh, changes in the incidence rate so a value of one uh, would be uh, indicating that there are no changes in the incidence rate, in this case of the days of, of poor mental health, for every one unit increase on the predictor variable, whereas a value that is greater than one is reflecting the notion that, you know, as, as you um, uh, increase, uh, observe increased values on the predictor variables, there's a, you have, uh, your incidence rate is increasing. If a value is less than one, uh, then the incidence rate is decreasing as you uh, obtain higher values on the predictor variable. So essentially a value of one um, is going to be, is consistent with a regression coefficient that is not significantly different from zero. Uh, a value uh, that is greater than one for the incidence rate would be associated with a positive sign for your regression coefficient. A value that is less than one is going to indicate um, uh, is going to be consistent with a negative regression coefficient. So uh, I'm not going to get too far into the weeds on that, but I just wanted you to know what this, this is. It's called an incidence rate ratio. Um, okay, so now let's run our analysis, and we will, um, in this case, we are going to uh, utilize the custom option, go with the negative binomial distribution with a log length function, and we're going to estimate the, um, the dispersion parameter a little bit more closely. So now I'm going to click on OK. And so now you can see uh, we've got the negative binomial um, uh, with the log link function again. And I'm going to scroll down, and you can see uh, now our ratio of the deviance to the degrees of freedom is actually um, you know, closer to 1 than you know, is what we had uh, seen uh, or expected based on the estimation. You can see that in terms of the, um, the omnibus test, we see still that our predictors our model that incorporates the set of predictors represents a significant improvement in fit over an intercept only or null model. When we scroll down and look at the individual pr um, uh, predictors, you can see that, um, first of all, you'll notice that the, this is the est estimate of the dispersion parameter, and you can see it's 3.942. Uh, so if, we, if we're running this and using um, Poisson regression, you know, the, the, uh, the dispersion parameter would be, you know, essentially zero. So the, the uh, negative binomial regression, re would, um, if, if this was zero, would reduce to a Poisson reg uh, regression, and then all the values would be the same. Um, when we had it fixed at one, as previously, you can see we were taking into account some of the over dispersion, and, um, but uh, we also saw that, um, that uh, you know, when we were looking at that ratio of deviance to to uh, degrees of freedom, uh, it was still you know we, we still appeared to have some uh, over dispersion, even accounting for some of the some of it by having this uh, set or fixed at one. 
Um, so here you can see this is uh, even larger, and you can see that white still is a non-significant predictor. Education is a um, um, is non-significant predictor um, at the conventional 0.05 level for a two-tailed test. Uh, condition of physical health was still is a significant negative predictor of uh, the expected number of days of poor mental health. Age was uh, a significant negative predictor as well in the model. Now we've run several different models and one nice thing is that we can compare the models in terms of their uh, relative fit. And the way that we can do this is by looking at um, the, uh, the uh, Akaiki's information criterion and the Bayesian information criterion. And so uh, each of the models that we generated uh, uh, incorp uh, includes uh, these estimates. And so the preferred model um, out of these is going to be the one with the lower AIC um, and or BIC. So let's go back and look at the Poisson regression. And, um, you know, we have in this particular case with the Poisson, yeah, that's it. Uh, we have an AIC and BIC values of 67.25 and 67.48. So now let's look at it when we um, have our dispersion parameter with the uh, uh, fixed at one uh, using the negative binomial. So um, we're going to scroll down to that particular analysis. And so here, you know, this is our, um, our negative binomial with uh, our dispersion parameter uh, fixed at one. And so now you can see we have a reduction. Uh, in the AIC and the BIC. So we have 33.22, 33.45. Let's try now the next one where we've estimated those. Uh, so 33.22, 33.45 uh, versus 29.58 and uh, 29.86. So when we estimated the dispersion parameter, we actually had um, uh, um, and didn't stick with the default in SPSS, we actually ended up with uh, an even better um, uh, fit uh, of the model to the data. So obviously this last model then is preferred in relation to the other models. Um, now, just to kind of uh, highlight this, just to show you uh, what I was talking about before in terms of the Poisson uh, essentially uh, assuming um, um, that uh, we don't have over or under dispersion. And, uh, you know, I'm going to compare it against a model, uh, a negative binomial model, where uh, we essentially set the dispersion parameter at zero, and we'll just do a quick comparison. So we'll, I'm going to rerun the Poisson uh, model. So here it is, uh, you know, with the, um, yeah, well, and then next we'll run the analysis with, um, we'll go back to custom. And in this case, I'm going to specify a value. And instead, the default is 1, which is actually the same as uh, the default up here for the negative binomial with log link. But I'm going to set this at 0 and click on OK. And so we'll look at the, you know, the relative fits of the two models. So you can see when we ran the uh, Poisson just now with the log link function, uh, once again, our um, our uh, Akaikis was 67.25, Bayesian uh, in information criterion was 67.48. Uh, and uh, if we scroll down and look uh, right here, you can see we have the 67.25 for the negative binomial and um, the uh, Bayesian information criterion is 67.48. So you can see that when we ran the negative binomial regression, setting the dispersion parameter at z uh, to zero, we end up with the same output as what we got before with uh, the Poisson regression. So that's just highlighting uh, the fact that the uh, negative binomial regression really is just adjusting the Poisson uh, results for the level of over dispersion. And we saw that um, as we, uh, in, in our case, as we took into account um, the level of over dispersion and really across the two models that we ran where we stuck with the default, we had an improvement in fit relative to the Poisson uh, regression. And then when we uh, specified um, or, or allowed the program to estimate the dispersion parameter, uh, we ended up with a um, pretty sizable dispersion parameter estimate. And uh, so the adjustment was much greater. Now, this is not always the case that you need to go through this uh, series. Um, 
Sometimes you may find that uh, there's not much difference, in which case you might as well just report on uh, the Poisson regression if uh, the, the, uh, the level of um, dispersion is, uh, or, or over dispersion is fairly minimal. Um, but nevertheless, um, that's the relationship between the Poisson and negative binomial regression. So this concludes uh, our discussion of Poisson and negative binomial regression, and um, I hope that you uh, found this useful.